Have you ever dreamt of launching a company built around LLMs? With those powerful models now easily accessible, they are pretty much the golden ticket to easily starting your own project. In this video, we'll dive into all the steps required to build your application based on LLMs. These steps encompass the practices commonly used to leverage LLMs in production effectively, and they are typically referred to as large language models operations, or LLM ops. From the chatbots powered by OpenAI's ChatGPT to the smart writing assistants you love like Grammarly, LLMs are reshaping almost all industries. But creating a successful LLM-based application is not that easy. It brings unique challenges that differ from traditional products and even from other AI-based products. Here are the 5 essential steps to kickstart your LLM venture, which you need to understand and carefully tackle to successfully implement. By the way, We've built an entirely free course on training, fine-tuning, and deploying LLMs in collaboration with Towards AI, Active Loop, and the Intel Disruptor Initiative, linked below, in which you can find code and practical examples for all the steps I'm discussing in this video. First, you need to select the right LLM for your use case. Here, you have many different choices from proprietary models like GPT-4 by OpenAI or Cloud by Anthropic, open source pre-trained LLMs like Llama2 or Falcon, fine-tuning your own LLM, to even training your own model from scratch, which we all cover in our free LLM course. Training from scratch is very difficult, but it can definitely be a game changer if you have the resource to do it. Developers or startups often lean towards proprietary models from tech giants or open source alternatives based on platforms like Hugging Face. Proprietary LLMs backed by substantial investments typically outperforms open source versions and come with the added benefit of cost saving from not needing to establish expensive inference infrastructure and from economy of scale. Additionally, always check an LLM's knowledge cutoff, which is the last date it was updated. For instance, ChatGPT can't discuss event post-September 2021, which might lead to inaccurate outputs on newer topics. So it really depends on your goal but you have many choices. Hugging Face manages an online leaderboard of open source LLMs evaluated on different curated benchmarks. You may be interested in checking it out to be always updated on the latest open LLMs. Once you choose a good foundation model, you must tailor it to your use case. Once again, you have different options depending on the task. I did a full video to help you solve this exact problem and better understand which adaptation technique to use for your task. From fine-tuning, prompting, retraining, using reinforcement learning techniques like RLHF or reinforcement learning from AI feedback, RLAIF, to using retrieval augmented generation, RAG, or its more efficient alternative called Deep Memory from Active Loop that we all explain in detail in our free course. To quickly recap, you can use fine tuning when you want to make your LLM an expert on a specific topic. You will want to use Deep Memory when you have documentation for your task that you want the model to use and not hallucinate answers. It's also much cheaper than fine tuning and can be complementary to it. Retraining from scratch is rarely done, but possible if you want to entirely own your LLM and not rely on other companies and approaches, similar to what Bloomberg did with Bloomberg GPT. RLHF and RLAIF are the powerful ways of fine-tuning your model to your task. As I said, we covered these approaches in depth in the other videos of the LLM series if you want more details in selecting the best approach in your case. Once your model is ready, you need to know how well it performs. Like in school, you need to compare it with others using exams. In this case, the exams are called benchmarks. And just like a philosophy exam, rating the students is super challenging since the outputs are text answers, which are mainly subjective. You cannot simply classify the answer and voila, it is right or wrong. For example, try thinking about how you could evaluate the quality of an answer given by an LLM assistant whose job is to summarize YouTube videos, for which you don't have reference summaries written by humans. This is even harder if your LLM is supposed to work as a general assistant like ChatGPT. Currently, organizations often resort to A-B testing to assess the effectiveness of their model. 
checking whether the user's satisfaction is the same or better after the change in production. So you minimally need to use multiple metrics, not just one, to have a better overall ID of the performance of your model. You also surely need qualitative evaluations, which means just play with it and push it to its limit yourself. As I said, you need to test your model on multiple benchmarks that are related to the task you want to tackle and compare the metrics given to other approaches to be sure you are somewhat competitive and using the best possible solution. At least, the best affordable solution. Here again, I have a complete video on the different evaluation benchmarks for LLMs and we have super practical examples for doing that in the course. You now have your powerful model that beats all others, but it does that only on your computer or remote server. The next step is to share it with the world. And this is called the deployment phase, which comes with lots of challenges from latency to memory to cost issues, where you need to make a lot of important decisions. Deploying large language models like GPT variants or any other LLM into real world applications often requires a multi-stage process. You will integrate it into systems using cloud-based APIs such as Google Vertex AI or Amazon SageMaker. Or by deploying the model directly using frameworks like TensorFlow Serving or Onyx. All the specific details will be dependent on the size of your model and the speed of responses you are looking for. Here are a few challenges to look out for and tips we gathered for you. First, compute resources. LLMs demand high computational power. Ensure you have the necessary infrastructure, whether it's cloud-based solutions with AWS or Google Cloud or powerful local servers. In practice, for smaller LLMs, a standard GPU can be fine. Indeed, an LLM with 1 billion parameters, where each parameter is stored as a float 32, requires 1 billion times 4 bytes, which is 4 GB of memory for inference which is fine for lower-end GPUs. Moreover, by leveraging quantization techniques, it's possible to store the model parameters with smaller data types like 1 bytes or 4 bits, with small downgrades in performance, thus saving even more in memory. For example, using 4-bit quantization, we'd be able to use an 8B parameter model on a GPU with 4 GB of RAM. If you are looking at libraries that can help you manage and deploy LLMs, you have the choice of VLLM, made by a team of researchers. And there's also the text generation inference library from the team at Hugging Face. The sheer size of LLMs can make them slow and expensive to run. Modal distillation, quantization, pruning, or using smaller variants can help you mitigate this, which you can learn more about in the course. Modal quantization is the simplest option you can apply in order to reduce your infrastructure costs and speed up the inference when using open source LLMs. Right now, the two popular implementations are Bits and Bytes and GPTQ. The team at Hugging Face published a great article comparing the two methods if you're interested. They conclude that Bits and Bytes is better suited for fine-tuning while GPTQ is better for generation. From their observations, one way to get better merged models would be to first quantize the model using bits and bytes, add and fine-tune the adapters, merge the trained adapters on top of the base model, or quantize the merged model using GPTQ and use it for deployment. Then, probably the most important but underlooked challenge ethical considerations. LLMs can sometimes produce biased or inappropriate outputs. Continuous monitoring and establishing ethical guidelines are crucial. You can also use retrieval augmented approaches to help mitigate hallucination and bias problems. By the way, I just published a video with 7 tips to help you mitigate that source of LLM errors, if you want to learn more about that. Another important aspect to consider is data privacy. When fine-tuning or doing continuous learning on specific data, ensure that user data privacy is maintained and that you are compliant with regulations like GDPR. Speaking of continuous learning, while LLMs have vast knowledge, they don't learn from new data after deployment unless retrained. Implementing a continuous learning process can help keep the model updated and increasingly powerful. You won't have the usual, as of my last update in September 2021, I do not have real-time data about events or elections that occurred after that point. Message anymore. If you've deployed your model and checked for all these sources of problems, congrats. The model is now live and running, but your work isn't done here. 
you still need to monitor how your model is performing online with new user requests. You will have bugs and unexpected behavior. That is for sure. So you need systems in place to visualize and inspect the execution flow of your LLM, analyze the inputs and outputs, view intermediate results, and securely manage prompts and LLM chain configurations. Thankfully, there are amazing companies helping you do that, and one that I personally use is Weights and Biases, and more specifically, Weights and Biases Prompts, which offers a set of features for developers to do all that. You can use any software you want, but make sure to track the LLM and not let it be out there. It could scale up pretty quickly and hurt lots of people. Again, if you want more information on that, check out the LLM Ops section of our course or Weights and Biases directly. Mastering LLM Ops is necessary for navigating the LLM-based business landscape. We've quickly covered all the steps required to build, deploy, and refine applications powered by these AI juggernauts. But the landscape is evolving quickly and continuously, so you must equip yourself with the right tools and stay up to date. If this piqued your interest and you are hungry for hands-on insights, dive deeper with our comprehensive course in collaboration with Towards AI, ActiveLoop, and the Intel Disruptor Initiative. I hope you've enjoyed this video of our LLM series. Stay tuned for more LLM insights in my upcoming videos.